Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good and afternoon. Thank you for being here this afternoon. I first want to congratulate you and compliment you on your long and happy married life. Thank and, you. Uh, I'm celebrating 40 of this year, so yours. I've got a little catching up to do with you, but uh, congratulations. Thank you. What I was not clear about in this conversation we've been having so far is when you were asked, was there an, an excessive amount of women complaints against you? And then you replied back by saying you have an equal number of men complaining against you as well. So maybe you can just enlarge on the complaints you've been getting both by men and women so that I'm clear, is it, is it only women or is it men or is it across the board? Okay, uh, I'm looking at the, um, uh, my list of, of judicial complaints and not counting those individuals who never appeared before me. Uh, There's four, five, four by men and three by women. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, four counting, I didn't count the attorney Hightower. So four and four in terms of judicial complaints. So the premise or the question, not premise probably, the question that you were being unfair to women from your point of view since you have equal number of complaints against men and women does not pan out is that well, is at least that... at least those people who took the trouble to file a, a judicial complaint thank you and that brings up the other question which i was a little concerned about was if people have not appeared before you what would be the rationale what would be the reason that they would take the trouble and to file a complaint against you. So that kind of doesn't, uh, I, I don't get that. Well, quite frankly, neither do I, but um, the rules do not require a person to be a litigant. To, so a member of the public can, can you know, if a member of the public feels that they've witnessed or read about something they think is inappropriate, they, they can file a complaint. Those complaints are dismissed, have been dismissed uh, as not having any probable cause, but uh, I, I can't account for people's motivation. So, so these are people that have n not even come before you. That's correct. And have read about you or heard about you or happened to be in the courtroom when you were discussing some other case and then have taken the trouble <coughs> or they feel compelled or whatever, whatever the feeling is to file a complaint. Apparently so. I mean, there's extensive social media, uh, you know, blogs and, 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 and so on, in which, you know, people voice their complaints uh, about judges and about the system, uh, fairly or unfairly. And some people feel compelled to join in the, in the discussion when they really have no, uh, no role in, 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 in the case. Thank you. And my final question is, we all have complaints against us in a file against us. Nobody is perfect. I get that. But, you know, there's a norm. I mean, you have a bell-shaped curve, and most of us fall within the, within the proper side of the bell shape. And, of course, you've got the outliers as well. Looking at the number of complaints against you, would you consider yourself being within the framework of the bell shape or on the fringes? I'm on the high fringe. And that's because I, spending um, spending six and a half years hearing family cases, three of those years in hearing high conflict cases, I deal with the most complex and high conflict uh, custody matters that appear in, in our courts. And, and these are people who are um, litigating on and on. You know, while, while we hear complaints, uh, many of us are even are fortunate enough, I mean, not to, not to get a complaint, but to get complimentary letters, you know, for the way you've conducted yourself or in the way, you know, interaction with, I'm a physician, so, and I see, I see a lot of patients, obviously, and, you know, do, you know, do get, I'm, I'm thankful for those complimentary letters I get. Do you, along with the complaints, unfortunately, get a, a list of, uh, or, of complimentary letters as well? Has that been an experience for you? Not letters, but comments in, you know, in court. Um, you know, Judge Bizzuto 
talk this morning uh, about the uh, the parties that come in with with agreements, who who settle their uh, dissolution of marriage issues and custody issues, uh, either on their own or with a little bit of help from a mediator or an attorney. And I um, I'm always very quick to commend those people and point out to them that they have given their children a gift by avoiding custody litigation and that they've provided a, an adequate role model to their children about how adults deal with very serious, complex, and emotional issues. Um, and those people I usually get very, very positive res responses from. Um, I have had some cases where, where I've heard in the past that you know people have uh, said, you know, things worked out really well. Um, but yeah, I get some. I don't get. I don't get letters. I get comments. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative.